So then that, thank you so much uh, for accepting our request to be part of this uh, Insight Out Show with Zach. Uh, wonderful to have you. Uh, we have a few participants uh, in the show. We have Mr. Louis Mariano, uh, who has coached the Junior Super Team side. He's also the head coach of the Cricket Academy, and he works for Chennai Super Kings as well. Um, we have Adjay Giridhar, who has represented Tamil Nadu at the junior level. Uh, he's the first division cricketer. He's also been part of the TNCL. It's fantastic to hear. So he knows what it is to be there. And we have a few bright young kids from the Elite Cricket Academy, Kapanda. So they're going to be shooting their questions to you as we go on this episode. Thank you so much, guys. So, Tatanda, what's the scene like? How's the situation back home in Liverpool? Well, um, the situation over here has been quite bad. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if you're following the news, um, you can tell that I think um, the UK is uh, probably third uh, on the number of deaths and, and easily creeping up to, you know, to second. Uh, I think the last month, uh, you know, we've been averaging around about 400 people, you know, 400 people dying uh, every day. Um, the numbers have since gone down to about 200 a day now. Uh, and I just heard that yesterday it was only uh, 160. So the numbers are now starting to get down, uh, you know, which is, which is nice to hear. But um, it has been quite a, a scary moment um, over here. So going back to your playing days, your childhood days, you know, back in Zimbabwe, I was reading an interview of you at, uh, which was published in the early 2000s when you made your debut for Zimbabwe. So you had said that you are keen on studying a course in accountancy as a backup plan. So we have gone through a lot of ups and downs, you know, both with just your first professional cricket as well as your personal life. What does it mean for a kid in Zimbabwe in playing cricket? What does it mean for a kid in the market? How would you put it? Well, you see, for, for me, I think, I think when cricket was introduced to our group and myself um, in, uh, as well, um, it had a different meaning than the meaning that it has now. It had a different meaning um, when I started than, um, you know, than it is now. So when we started, cricket was just a minority sport. Um, so only the you know the rich played the sport. Now I grew up in a um, in a high density suburb where we didn't actually know anything about cricket. So all we knew about was um, you know uh, football and athletics. Now um, so when when it was introduced to us, it was just a trial. And, and that trial was very successful because we had a, 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 a very dedicated coach who was named um, Stephen Mangongo. Um, and very early on, when we got hooked up to the sport, we, we were told of the opportunities that sport had, that cricket had, which is, you know, traveling around the world and, you know, especially making friends, you know, all over the world, um, which I found to be very true. Now, so that was what really got me. Now, obviously, knowing that in sport, you only have, you know, the, the, the lifespan or, or the career span is very short. I, my, my backup plan was always, because I was very good in numbers, my backup plan was, it was I had to be accountants because, you know, I loved working with numbers. But nowadays, you know, cricket in Zimbabwe is open to everyone. So um, I think nowadays it's got a different meaning than, um, than it had for me. When I started playing international cricket at the, age of, um, at the age of 17, one of the very first things that I did was I, you know, when, I, when we'd play against Australia, I would try and speak to the opposition and find out. So I would pick a, a player that I liked. Like, for example, in Australia, you know, I liked Adam Gilchrist. So I would go and speak to Adam Gilchrist and I asked him how much practice he used to put on his own game. Now I'm this is besides, this is besides team practice, your own individual training. So on average, so I asked um, Sachin Tendulkar, I asked Rao Dravid, I asked uh, Yunif Khan, I asked um, um, uh, Adam Gilchrist, um, I asked Lara, I asked um, Katli Ambrose, 
so those are the main ones that I asked. So I asked them how many, sorry, and um, I also asked uh, Hashim Amla. I asked them how much practice they used to put in um, on their own training. So on average, I found out that they would put at least about two more hours uh, besides the, the, you know, the, the team training. Sorry, it was about one and a half hours on average. Then I started practicing two hours on my own. Because I thought, you know what, if they're putting one and a half hours, let me put two hours so that in, in, if I start improving quicker while it, I'm younger, then by the time I reach their age, I would achieve more than they've achieved. That was how my goal was. Like. So, so the message here is try and do what other people can't do. That's how you get recognized. If you're doing what everyone else is doing, then you are just going to remain on the same level and people will, will, not, will not stand out. You've got to stand out and you stand out by doing what other people can't do. So going back to again, Adam Dupit and Dori, how do you describe that? Because I remember oh, you once told me that uh, you're really surprised to see the way Dori whips the wave of the flag, the speed of Dori's jumping that actually surprised you a lot of times. How do you describe these two together? For Donny, the first time I saw Donny, if I'm to be honest, the first time I saw Donny, he had come with the A side. He also came with um, uh, on the same tour. They came to Zimbabwe, and it was an A side team. And um, the other person who came was um, uh, oh dear, it was Danish Kane. It was Danish Katik. So. Katik came with Donny. They were the two keepers. I thought Katik was, um, you know, was more natural than Donny. Uh, and still, in keeping, he is more natural. Even in betting, he is more natural. Um, but I remember watching Donny and thinking he's got very good hand-eye coordination. Now, the way he keeps, his hands are not always together. Like, um, you know, to, you always have the little fingers together. When he catches, his hands are not always like that. But he's managed, he always manages to catch the ball um, and, and whip the bells, you know, in a flash with a very different technique. Very different and odd technique. And the same thing about his betting. His betting is also odd. But it's, it's his great hand-eye coordination that has taken him through. But it's, I, don't think it's not, I don't think it's only his hand-eye coordination. It's also his, probably his mental, uh, his mental toughness. Because normally if you, don't look, if you don't look the part, so to speak, it's easy for coaches to just put you aside. But uh, Donny backed that up with, with statistics. That tour in Zimbabwe, he didn't play well. He didn't bet well. But the next tour, he went, I think they passed through to, and they went to, to Kenya, where he scored 250. Uh, and that put him to be called into the national team. So, so if I'm to go back to them too, uh, Gilchrist was a natural batsman and not a natural wicketkeeper. Um, so Gilchrist, you know, always used to put more time on his keeping than his betting. Uh, because in his betting was very natural. Eating the ball was, you know, quite easy for Gilchrist. So um, he used to put more time on his, you know, on his, um, on his keeping than on his betting. Uh, 